On behalf of Pastor and Lady Ming and the Retrieve Your Life family, we welcome you to Retrieve Your Life Ministries, a church that is looking up, reaching out, and caring for all. Let's join today's service, which is already in progress. Good lesson. We learn and I yes. yes. we learn a lot about God and yes. what we should do as the word is being given. Amen. 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 Ooh, I'm so grateful today, y'all. I was thinking about an old church member at another church, Miss Mother Flemings. And how so grateful I am this morning that God gave me the activity of my limbs. Amen. Yesterday morning and today, I have woke up at 3 a.m., couldn't move in a whole bunch of pain. And so I guess that's how I was thinking about her, about the activity of the limbs, how we are able to move about. When we in our 40s, we never think about where we're going to be going when we get to our 50s. And if I can take back any of that, it'd be so rejoiceful. That's all for that. Amen. So, I'm just excited about moving right now because 3 o'clock this morning, I couldn't. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. And we were just learning about the tithing and the giving and how if we don't give what we should give, we have repercussions of our tithing. Uh, certain things happen, and I pray to God that I have been a grateful and a blissful tither because the last two days, if it's the result of it, oh man, I'm in trouble. <laughs> when evil men of advantage against me to devour my spirit, when the evil and the fall attacks me, they will stumble and fall through an army beside me. My heart will not fear, though the war break out against me. Even then will I be confident. One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in this house forever. Amen. Amen. That's your call to worship. Amen. Good morning again. Good morning. We are at that time in our service now where it's time to bring our cares to the altar. We're in a fresh new week that God has allowed us to graciously see. Amen. We talk about blessings. We talk about favor. We talk about grace and mercy. He's allowed us another, another day, another beautiful day, not only to see, but another day, another chance to get right, to get close to him. And he tells us to bring our cares to the altar. Take my yoke, which is light and easy to carry. Quit carrying all that stuff from last week. Quit carrying all that stuff from last month. Quit carrying all that stuff from last year or years or decades. Bring all that stuff to the altar. Quit carrying that stuff around. Also, going to give you a bad back and bad attitude. <laughs> and when you bring it up here, leave it here. Don't take it back with you. Gracious Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we just come before you as humbly as we know how. We just thank you. We thank you for being God and God all by yourself. We thank you for the Holy Trinity, oh Heavenly Father. We thank you for God the Father. We thank you for... God the Son, we thank you for God the Holy Spirit. We thank you for being the beginning, the end, the first and the last. We thank you for being the, the creator. We thank you for creating us in your image, oh Heavenly Father. We thank you for being high but looking down low upon us. Who is man that you are so mindful of him, that you show such love to us? 
Heavenly Father, we just ask you to remove anything that's not of you from us. Heavenly Father, you know our struggles. You know our sins. You know the sins we've done in the past. You know the sins we're doing right up to this point. And you know the sins we're going to do in the future. We ask you to forgive us of that. Forgive us of these wrong thoughts. Forgive us of wrong deeds. Forgive us for wrong motives. Forgive us for our selfishness, O Heavenly Father. Forgive us for the bitterness that we may hide, the secrets, the pain, the, e the evil schemes that may be trying to hatch in our mind. We ask you to forgive us and remove that from us. Create in us a clean heart. Create in us a tender heart, O Heavenly Father. Create in us a heart that's going to be receptive to you and your word, O Heavenly Father. Mold us and shape us, O Heavenly Father, like the clay that we are, to be used for your good works. Heavenly Father, again, we just thank you. We thank you for the breath of life. We thank you for the use of our limbs. We thank you for the movement of our... We, we, we just thank you for being able to get up and like mine, to get up and worship you. We thank you for the abundant material blessings you have for us. Because not only you supply our needs, you supply us with some of our wants as well, O Heavenly Father. So not only do you provide our needs, you provide some of our desires as well. But in your wisdom, you know not to give us all our desires because you know what's best for us. Even we may not know that, but you know that. And we thank you for that. We thank you for giving us a place to worship freely, O Heavenly Father. We thank you to be able, we can come to you anytime, any place, O Heavenly Father. We thank you for that freedom. Heavenly Father, we just ask you just to touch every family that's represented within the sound of our voice, O Heavenly Father. Go out, touch their families, touch their friends, touch their co-workers, touch their enemies as well, O Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we are, we know some of us are struggling with health issues. Some of us are struggling with relationship issues. Some of us are struggling with economic issues. Some of us are struggling with marriage issues, O Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, you know the need that's deep within every heart. There's some that we'll mention and some that we don't. We just ask you just to reach deep down and take those needs and we just give them over to you to work them out for your good will, for your will, not our own. As in heaven, let your will be done here on earth in our lives. Use those needs, use those issues to teach and guide us to be better disciples of you, O Heavenly Father. We ask you to touch those that we know that may be sick and shunny in O Heavenly Father. We pray not only for ourselves, we pray not only for our church, but we pray for this community. We pray for this city. We pray for this state, for this nation, for this world, O oh, Heavenly Father. For as this world turns more and more corrupt, we get we want to just get closer and closer to you because you reveal in your word what's going on. So we just trust in you, O oh, Heavenly Father. Again, we give you thanks, O Heavenly Father, for being the God that you are. We thank you for providing the lamb, the sacrificial lamb, and your son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who, being all points God, came as a man and sacrificed for us so that we may have fellowship with you. So we thank you, and we give you praise, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you thanks also for the Holy Spirit, which is our comforter, who daily teaches us, who daily guides us to get closer and closer to you. We lift all these blessings, all these requests of your precious Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior. Amen. 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 Standing in the need of a blessing. You know, I think we all should be standing in need of a blessing. Yes. You know, it's been uh, standing in need of a blessing, and building a fence around you, and going up beyond. I don't know what other message you could receive this morning. The guy's trying to get your attention. Amen. Because we all standing in need of something. 
And I don't know about you, but I, I, I definitely can use a blessing about right now. Amen. I'm standing yes. in need of a blessing. So, you know, this morning, you know, when you, when you, when you, sometimes you got to listen to something. You got to listen to the word. You got to listen to what, what, what God is saying to you. But sometimes he's speaking directly to you. But sometimes we, we, get, we get caught up with, with the choirs and we get caught up with the music. But sometimes God is trying to give you a message. You know, and, and you know, sometimes people don't really think they're in need. Think they all have it all together. But we're all in need of something. Amen. And I don't know nobody that's not in need of a blessing. Amen. You may not think you in need of a blessing, but you, you know what? If you, if you got all that, then you don't really need Christ. Amen. Really, you done lost your first love. You know, everybody think that first love is that man or that woman. See, you got it all twisted. Your first love. Mm. Ah, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 Uh, I, I want to first say uh, uh, I want to uh, give prayers up and uh, to the family of Moses Malone, uh, uh, good friend of mine, died this morning, 60 years old. Most of y'all don't know Moses Malone. He played in the NBA. He was an NBA Hall of Famer. Uh, he is a good friend of mine. Amen. In my mind. He's a good friend of mine. We're going to keep him in prayer. Amen. But Moses Malone died this morning. You know, we just pray for him and his family. Amen. 60 years old. You know, we, 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 we leave in this. We don't tell y'all. We leave in this place. People we know, uh, people we, you know, we grew up with, things of that nature. We're leaving. We're leaving. So, you know, we, we just pray that everybody that is leaving, that even if it's us, that we're right with God. That we're right with God. Amen. Amen. You all know how we do it, uh, RYLM. A big game hunter, he went on a safari with his wife and his mother-in-law. And one evening while he was deep in the jungle, with, uh, his wife woke up to find her mother was gone. So rushing to her husband, she insisted on them both trying to find her mother. So the hunter, he picked up his rifle and he took a swig of whiskey. And he started to look for his mother-in-law. <laughs> now in the clearing not far from the camp, they came upon this chilling site. The mother-in-law was backed up against a thick bush. And a large male lion stood facing her. And then the wife cried out, what are you going to do? Nothing, said the husband. The lion got himself in this mess. Let him get himself out of it. <laughs> hey, man, y'all catch that on the way home. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to know who you're messing with, whether they're big or small. Say it like you mean. This is my Bible. This is my God. The Word of God and who I will trust. Amen. Yeah, yeah, I really sound dead this morning, but I'm going to go ahead right on in, and, you know, because I hope the Word picks y'all up. But you should already be picked up. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you on this day, God. We thank you for the breath of life, Lord. We thank you for your Word. We thank you, God, that you just looked upon us, your children. And continue to give us your protective cover. We thank you, Doc, God, for those that are here. We thank you for God that those that couldn't make it this morning. We thank you now, Lord, that you just receive our worship. Come inside of me. Holy Spirit, awake. Father, let me just remove myself. And let you just be in charge. These no things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. If you return your Bible to the book of Luke, it's in the New, New Testament, the Gospels, right at the beginning of the New Testament, the book of Luke, Matthew, Mark, and Luke is the third book in the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, chapter 2, starting at verse 43. Matthew, Matthew Luke, chapter 2, verse 43. Luke, 
go to Walgreens and get you a fresh bill. Yeah. <laughs> and they don't see us. Amen. I'm reading out the NIV, Luke chapter 2, verse 43. After the festival was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but they were unaware of it. You may be seated in the presence of God. <coughs> Give you the background on this. This, this, this. this chapter, this chapter, chapter 2 in the book of Luke, it's really about the birth of Jesus Christ. About, uh, some of the life of Jesus Christ. And it even talks about uh, 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 the thing that he was preparing himself for. See, Jesus, when, when Jesus was born, uh, first of all, Joseph, in this period of Joseph, went down to the town of Bethlehem. And see, when he went down to the town of Bethlehem, the only reason he, see, everybody got to, got to get that story kind of twisted. The reason Joseph went to the town of Bethlehem during that period of time was because. He, you know, at the time, they had to take a census. And everybody had to, had to be counted. And the only reason he went to Bethlehem was because he belonged to the house and the line of David. And, and see, the town was the town of David. Bethlehem was the town of David. He was a line in the lineage of David. That is why he went to Bethlehem from Nazareth to be counted in the census. But during that time while he was there, what he did was he, you know, uh, Mary decided she was ready to have the baby. So when she was having the baby, they didn't have a place into the inns and nowhere, there was no place for them to stay, so they went to a manger. And, there, and you know the rest of the story. Jesus was born, and he would rest in the manger. And as this time came and years went by, uh, they went on, and Jesus presented himself to the temple. Jesus was presented in the temple, I should say, because each boy, uh, when they come a time, a period in their lives at 12, in the Jewish faith, they had to, to present themselves. That was, that was the law back then. They had to be presented to the Lord. And Simeon at that time in, in, in uh, Bethlehem, he was the one that was presenting Jesus Christ. But Simeon had already uh, talked to God, and God, he had asked God to let him see the Messiah before he died. So when he saw Jesus, when they brought him to the temple, he, he knew who he was, and he thanked the Lord for allowing him to see the Messiah. So then here we go. But every year, that Jesus' parents, they had to go to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. That was, that was, that was, that was, that was, that was the law. So at this, at this time, Jesus is 12 years old. Okay? So after the festival was over, his parents started, you know, everybody was turning home with relatives and friends and whatnot. But Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents didn't know that. You know, they, they, you know they, they, when you're walking and talking, you just, you know, not paying attention. And they just thought the boy was with them. But when they looked and, and they looked at it and looked around, he was not there. So they had to return to Jerusalem, and they looked for three days. Finally went to the temple, and there he was, listening and teaching. So that's what I want to talk to you all about this morning is don't lose Christ. Don't lose Christ. You know, just like Mary and Joseph, in today's society, if that had happened, you'd be going to jail. They mean, you know, you lost your child. What do you mean you lost your child? You don't know where he's at. Amen. Amen. So true, so true. And then you go back and you search for three days, and you don't find your child. <laughs> but in today's society, you know, you know, it's, you know, you're probably not going to nine or ten. You're going to find your child in the temple either. Amen. 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 <laughs> All right, now. unless your child named Jesus. <laughs> So point number one I want to talk about, you know, don't lose Christ. Don't lose Christ because of anger. I, 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 I was listening to Bible, I mean Sunday school this morning, and they was talking about a lot of things, and you know, and I'm being honest with y'all, I, I heard it and you know it got heated. 
I, I, I said it did. <laughs> it got a little heat. You know y'all get heated because when you get a little heated, your voice is raised. Mm. Let's keep it. Let's keep it real. Your voice is raised. Feelings got hurt. <clears throat> but see, don't lose Christ because of anger. We get angry a lot. For what? What is the price of anger? You are you really willing to lose Christ because of your anger? How many times do you get angry during the day? Amen. Think about it. Amen. Amen. Your anger can destroy or disrupt your entire day. Amen. And there has been times in our lives where we have allowed that. And we call ourselves Christians, but we talking about we, we love Christ, but we lose Christ in a minute. Let me rephrase that. In a millisecond. Amen. <laughs> We're not gonna give Christ 60 seconds. We're gonna, he's gone and within a millisecond he is out the door. Because we are in a rage. Don't lose Christ because of anger, people. It, it's, it's really not worth it. And don't say, don't sit right in your mind tomorrow. Hmm, Pastor, just don't know. That's easier said than done. <laughs> I'm so sick and tired of people with that easier said than done stuff. <laughs> you control you. Amen. You control your anger. <clears throat> Ain't no easier said than done. Just do it. Hmm. So you're angry because you want to be angry. All right. Not because, oh, somebody, they, they made, they, oh, they, they messed with the wrong one. They just made me. No, you made yourself angry because you allow that mess to get inside you. Amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. You allow someone to disrupt Amen. your joy. Yes, yes. So whose fault is that? We blame the person that made us angry. <laughs> but it's your fault. You lost Christ. They didn't lose Christ because Christ was never already in them. <laughs> <laughs> they came with the devil. <laughs> you, you listen to what I'm saying. <laughs> you got Christ. They came. Oh, my. And you play right along with the game. Mm -mm. See, you had the ball. You had the ball. All right, now. Tucked in. <laughs> <laughs> you a star in the house of the Lord. Amen. You had the 10. <laughs> you had the 20. Uh -oh. Drop the ball. Drop the ball. You fumbled. Because <laughs> <laughs> you lost Christ <coughs> with your anger. You fumbled and you didn't recover the ball. You lost it. Now Satan has it. And he has you. We lose Christ, you all, because we get so angry, we get so round up that we can't even think straight. We let anger just control our, our everything. We let it control our being, our saying, our mouths, our emotions, our feelings, our future. <laughs> because we lose Christ. The boy Jesus didn't go to the temple to be angry. The boy Jesus didn't go to the temple to teach anger. Matter of fact, when his mother and his father found him, they were not even angry. 
Let one of us lose our child and children and we go find them. We start screaming and hollering, wait a minute, you lost them? <laughs> what you screaming and hollering at them for? Don't you never leave me. You know, you know, you know, you know, you know right back where I can see you. Well, you lost him. <laughs> they were not angry. <coughs> they just asked him, why, 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 where was he and why, why did he didn't come, you know, stay with them? And then I'm going to tell you something what Jesus told his mother and his father. I'm about my father's business. <coughs> And the thing about that was, at that particular time, until later on down the road, they didn't understand what he was talking about. Amen. Just like us. See, when the word comes to you like this, you don't understand. Because somebody's still going to get angry. Amen. Somebody's still going to lose Christ. Amen. You're losing them right now as I speak. Cause I'm pissing somebody off. <laughs> Shame on the devil. Cause you ain't got nothing coming out of here. Y'all wanna get pissed off. But I'm not gonna lose Christ because of you. Not today. See, this is this, this is what I'm talking about. Don't lose Christ. If you say you full of the Holy Ghost, as people say. All right. I'm full of the Holy Ghost. I'm saved, sanctified, and full of the Holy Ghost. But you, why you got all that hell? <laughs> Point number two. And get off the anger part, because y'all getting angry already. <laughs> Don't lose Christ by taking a shortcut. Uh -oh. You know how we do. We're always trying to take shortcuts. Trying to find the easy way out. Or the easy way around. God gives us a mission, okay. and we try to take a shortcut with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then we wonder why it didn't work. Mm -hmm. Oh my! God said, "Wait," <laughs> but you took a shortcut. All right. Then you wonder why you were still in the stuff you was in. Mm -hmm. You lost Christ. Because every time you take a shortcut in life, you're losing Christ. The Christ that's in you, every time he gives you direction and you decide to take a shortcut, you lost Christ. So it's just like, you know, that anger thing? See, when you're angry, you'll take all kinds of shortcuts. <laughs> and when you're angry and taking shortcuts, that is why you lose Christ. You lose Christ when you take them shortcuts. And you don't, you don't, sometimes you take them, don't even really know you take them shortcuts. Because you, so, you, you got a light, you full of anger. How can you take a shortcut in life when God has directed you and already ordered your steps and told you to go this way? God said go a mile. You try to take a shortcut and go three quarters of a mile. <laughs> See, at the mile, at the end of the mile, was your blessing. Mm -hmm. But when you went three quarters and took a shortcut and lost Christ, you ran into a whole bunch of mess. You was down on mess street. <laughs> then you went up frustration. You took a left on anger. Uh oh, I'm sorry. My fact, you tried to back up and do a, a, a U turn, but you wound up on depression. Oh uh my. -uh. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Trying to take all those shortcuts. But see, when you take all them shortcuts, you ain't going nowhere but, but, but where Satan wants you to go. Mm -hmm. Anger, frustration, depression, oppression. Then on top of that, now, you, now you're sick. You get so angry sometimes, you don't realize that you dad had a stroke, and then you sit in there and about, oh, oh, Lord, bless me. Heal me, Lord. <laughs> you want the saints to come and pray for you. All right, man. But you didn't have to have a stroke. You gave it to yourself. 
Thank God you didn't bust an aneurysm. Stop trying to take shortcuts. Amen? Amen. Point number three, let y'all go. Don't lose Christ by fearing to accept this challenge. Don't lose Christ by fearing to accept this challenge. How many of y'all know that you've been challenged by the Lord? Amen. Amen. But do you, do you, are you afraid sometimes of the challenge that he presents to you? Do you, do, you, do you fear what steps or what, 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 what task or what mission the Lord puts you on and wants you to go to? Do you, do you, do you accept this challenge or are you afraid? And I'm going to tell you, the main thing a lot of us we're afraid to do is give our all. That's one challenge a lot of us just not have met yet. To give our all. I heard them talking about the Bible, so they're talking about uh, tithes and things of that nature. And, and you know, and, but see, that's part of giving you all. We want Christ to give us his all. We want, we want Christ to be there when we need him. And I'm here to tell everybody this morning, Christ hasn't failed nobody. He got, I don't know how many, he got, num let's say he got numerous wins and zero losses. He's a winner. See, last time I checked in society, everybody loves a winner. <laughs> Nobody wants to be on a losing team. Amen. <laughs> huh? Oh my. If you were playing ball or something, you playing with something, you like, Psh. I ain't playing with them next year. <laughs> right. I don't want to be on this team. All we do is lose. You know, you go to the game and first your mind, your mind already said, we're gonna lose anyway. So you go out there with a with a losing attitude. Same thing with you in life. When you when you approach life with a losing attitude, how can you win? How can you accept the challenge that Christ gives you if your attitude is already lost? Because you've lost Christ. See, if you lose Christ, your attitude is going to be poor. But yet we say he's the winner because he has no losses. And how many losses do you have? to fulfill and give all of ourselves to him. I don't think the Bible talks about tithes and offerings in Malachi, and I don't think the Bible talks about giving your all uh, uh, to him, a uh, uh, whole holy to him, a uh, living sacrifice. I, in the book of Romans, I don't think he talks about all these things and tell, and tell us and teach us all these things for us to just sit on ourselves. Why should we fear anything that we face if we know we have Christ? And here again, you know, I'm going to tell you about the minister's case. They're going to end their minds. You know, that's easier said than done, Pastor. Not again. Not again. <laughs> you shouldn't fear nothing. If you know you got Christ in you, why should there be any fear? Why should you fear any circumstance that life throws at you? Yeah, it's a struggle. Yes, it hurts. Yes, uh, you know, Pastor, you just don't know how it is out here. I do. Let me tell you something. I ain't always been where I'm at. I didn't have the struggle. And wasn't nobody there to help me but the Lord. When you gotta pick up your family and move from country to country, ain't no family around. Huh? Ain't no friends around. Huh? Amen. You gotta pick up and move and you go, you don't know nobody. Amen. All you got is the family that you laid that you came with. 
Oh, I know the struggle. <laughs> there ain't no money. You done ran out of money. <laughs> trying to figure out where the money going to come from. But I'll, let me tell you something. The Lord always made a way. Amen. I'm going to tell you a story. I, and I, before I let you go. I remember when we left here and went to Japan. 1980. I was stationed at Scott. I had just got back from Canada. And I was only back here for like for less than a year. And I, I thought I was going to be here a while. So me and the lady, we, we applied for housing at, at Scott. And then got accepted for housing, right? So we moved in. The church, this, is, this is a crazy story. We moved in at Scott. Ain't got, ain't no family. Family right across the river. But ain't nobody helping me. And me and my proud self, you know, I wasn't asking either. See? So we move over there. We ain't got no money. Kids ain't got no beds. Hey Amen. We got we got we got we had uh we had bed springs. Ain't no got no mattresses. Can't afford no mattresses. So you had God work. And thank God I knew a lot of folk. I went over to Scott, I went over to the dorm. And you know they got them twin beds. Mm -hmm. I said, man, y'all got the extra mattresses over here. Man said, Bill, where you at? I said, I'm over here over in Weary House. He said, man, take, take a couple of these matches and go. Took a couple of matches, put them on the kids' beds and everything, because we had a little bed that we had bought. Couldn't afford to buy them none. So we move in. <laughs> we didn't need nothing packed. I went back to work. Got a message that said, we more men have been reassigned to Department of Special Representative of Japan. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. I just got back. Just moved. Boxes ain't even unpacked. So when the movers came, I thank God when we moved to Japan, we moved to Japan. Make a long story short, we moved up, had everything moved over there. Didn't know that, you know, and then we we were staying, we were staying in this place. Didn't know that they had a uh, uh, housing already for us. Then we get to the housing, house already furnished. Wow. I'm talking about fully, fully furnished. Look at God, look at God. I'm like, good Lord. <laughs> we ain't got to come out no money. We ain't got to be broke, broke, broke. <coughs> fully furnished, fully, fully furnished. Pots, pans, dishes, glasses, beds, Dining room set, not not a, not a table, you know, you didn't kitchen table, right. a dining room set, sofa. Oh man, we thought we thought we hit the jackpot. <laughs> <laughs> we was too happy. But that's how God works. Because after that, we got shipped to Italy right. with the Air Force, See, that was an army post. They took it on. I, I should have done on what I should have done. <laughs> They took care of the folks. Went to the, went to the home, I mean, the Air Force, they got shipped to Italy. Got over there, we was in a hotel. It was cold. Free, I said, and I asked the man, I said, can you get us some blankets, some, some heat? No, I asked, him, I asked him to get us, can we get some heat? The man came back, brought us some blankets. I'm like, ain't no heat in here? <laughs> I didn't know, let me tell you, that was an experience. And, and you know, we, did, we, we had to stay in a hotel, and you know, living in a hotel, and living out of suitcase, and it's cold, you don't know nobody. Don't know where to go get something to eat. Man, I, I'm telling you, I, I thank God for who he is. Amen. God found us a car. God found us a place to live. God put us with some good people that loved us and loved our children. God, God is good. This is why I say don't lose Christ. Don't fear to accept this challenge. Because even, look, I, and I tell this story to tell you this. This was a period when I, would, I wasn't thinking about the Lord. Amen. I was thinking about me and my circumstance. I was on Depression Street. I went on, you know, and I left that. I went and got me another bottle went down frustration. Huh? Mm. And when I finished that bottle, I went to another one. I turned on Angel Street. <laughs> I ain't always been filled with the Lord. But I thank 
thank God he has always looked after me. I talk to guys that, 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 that you know, when we, I see when I'm not in the hospital or whatever, and just people in general that I meet and be talking about uh, 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 the wars and everything like that. And I talked to a couple of Vietnam vets, told them where I was at and everything. And they were like, man, that's right on the border of Cambodia. I'm like, yeah. I said, but I thank God, you know, when I went, y'all had already did all the fighting. <laughs> you know, 73 things started slowing down a little bit. But they were still, now I don't think they were still killing folks now. Mm -hmm. Just wasn't hot and heavy as it was, as it had been. So, you know, I, you know, again, I thank God. Because I used to sit on top of a, 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 a fuel truck, 10 o'clock at night, me and a couple other guys, and drink hot Budweiser's, mm -hmm. and watch all of the mortar, mortar rounds coming over, hitting the flight line, and look it like for it was like, you know, like a fireworks show every night. <laughs> Now, I thank God. Hello. One didn't hit the field truck. Hello. He kept me. Even when I wasn't even trying to keep myself. Amen. Amen. Don't lose Christ. See, I'm, I'm saying all this to say this, you all. When I lost Christ, he was still looking after me. Amen. Amen. Now that I got Christ, I, I, I appreciate him so much, I don't want to lose him. I can't afford to let anger get in me and take over me. I can't afford to take shortcuts. I can't afford to, fear, to accept the challenges that he give me in life, whether they're good challenges or bad, whether it's a good road or a bad road. I can't afford to stop, not to accept the challenge. Hmm. Amen. Because I can't afford to lose Christ again. I've lost him once. I, I, can't, I don't want to lose him again. And see, I'm telling you something. It's, it's like an addict or an alcoholic. When they recover, you know, they don't, they don't, they, they, they don't want to, they don't want to go back that road. And they find Christ. They glad to have Christ in their life. They don't want to lose Christ again. Amen. And see, I'm talking about me. There's no difference between me and them. I wasn't doing right. I wasn't following Christ. Wasn't thinking about Christ. Christ who? Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> we have to focus, you all. We really have to focus and get our lives in order. And when I say get your lives in order, I'm telling you, stop. Stop. Even though you know he's there, don't lose him because don't 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 lose him because of letting Satan in. Stop letting people stay on your joy. Stop letting people punch your buttons. It's not even worth it. Because the 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 the, the, the anger and, the, and and all this stuff that they bring. When you don't respond, guess what? They got to carry it with them. Because it didn't go. It didn't come off on you. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Amen. See, when, you, when somebody angry and they start to come at you with all that anger, and you give it back, when they get through, see, it's on you now because they done. They didn't accomplish their mission. <laughs> but when they bring it to you and you say, bye, Felicia. <laughs> Guess what? It's still all on them. Now they got to carry that burden. Right. And you're still full of joy. Why? Because you didn't give in and you didn't lose Christ. You're a child of the king. You ain't got time for nonsense. Who is it? Fear. Who is it? Anger. Who is it? Depression. Who is it? Frustration. Oh! Come on, y'all, we're gonna turn up. <laughs> Stop giving in. Stop being a punching dummy for the devil. 
See, because you know what a punching dummy does? Every time it gets punched, it just bounces right back up. So it can get punched again. Just bounce around, wave for what way, just come back up. Stop being somebody's dummy. Let them start punching themselves. Just walk away. <laughs> Holla. Hey, you, you ain't worth my time. You know what I'm saying? You, you're not. You're not worth my time. That, that's, what, that's what you got to do to people that bring all this stuff to you. Because it's not going to do anything but make you. It's going to bring you on their side. Amen. They're already trying to pull you in. As soon as they, as soon as they, as soon as they get, as soon as you get angry, they just, they, they loosen their brain a little bit, and let you get, just let you get full of it, and they just reel you. Know, they just slowly, so they ain't got to pour no more. They just slowly just pour you on in. <laughs> Don't lose Christ. Don't lose Christ. You know, if, if anything we learn from the boy. Jesus Christ is not to lose him because first and foremost when Jesus was at the temple when his parents had left him where they, they, he, they thought he, they, they had lost him one thing for sure he was never lost I, I hope y'all received it because when you get to that point of rage <laughs> Remember the boy Jesus. He was never lost. Even within you and inside you, he's never lost. Amen. 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 Amen.